Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm in the West Brisbane suburb of Mount Omini, visiting the Centenary Suburbs War Memorial Gardens. This memorial can be found on the corner of Dandenong Road and Arabri Avenue, just across the road from the Mount Omini Shopping Centre. So if you're interested in visiting this memorial, there's plenty of facilities, public transport, and places you might obtain a snack or something. This is a relatively large memorial and there's a fair bit of stuff here, as you can probably see. It's spacious and I think well laid out, with plenty of benches you could sit at. The gardens are neat and attractive and the grounds are clearly maintained. That's the kind of thing I like to see. I guess the first thing to look at is the first thing we came across. The plaques on the back of the big sandstone block with the name of the memorial on the other side, which was dedicated in 2001 in memory of those who gave their lives in defence of our country. The low sandstone wall near that block also bears two plaques. The first tells us this memorial garden was unveiled on the 25th of April 2001, that being Anzac Day. The other one tells us the memorial was dedicated and officially opened on the 11th of November 2001, which as you probably know is Remembrance Day. On the other side of this large paved circle, which probably has a better name that I'm not aware of, we find the entrance to the Courage Track, which is marked by two plaques mounted on small sandstone blocks. The one on the right tells us this was dedicated on VP Day, the 15th of August 2005, in the spirit of the Anzacs. Comradeship, courage, sacrifice, and others before self. The plaque on the left tells us the Courage Track commemorates all those who fought and served to give us a free country, and that it was opened on the 60th anniversary of the end of World War II, Victory in the Pacific Day 2005, which as the other plaque said, is the 15th of August. We can see the track going off into the distance, but first, let's look at this mosaic over here. I thought this was rather interesting, and it's pretty attention getting. This piece of art depicts a girl standing on the fields of Gallipoli in memory of those who fell. It was created by schools in the area to commemorate the centenary of the Anzac landings at Gallipoli. Now to the Courage Track, which, as you can see, winds its way through the park. Unfortunately, I didn't do a very good job of filming the path, but I did manage to get pictures of all the plaques that are laid into it. These are definitely not in the order in which they appear on the track itself, so if you really want to see these in order, you'll have to come here yourself. In addition to the plaques commemorating the various conflicts in which Australia has been involved, there's an Aleppo pine next to the path, with this small plaque telling us the tree is a descendant of the original Lone Pine of Gallipoli. This was planted on Anzac Day in 2004. We follow the path around a little bit further, and the plaques stop in front of this. This is the Wall of Remembrance. It does pretty much what you would expect something named that to do. That is to say it bears the names of people from the area who served in Australia's armed forces. Let's now take this opportunity to observe a minute of silence in remembrance and reflection on those who gave their lives. Next to the Wall of Remembrance is a pair of small plaques on sandstone blocks. The first one lists the names and details of five brave young men from this area who were killed or wounded during World War I. The plaque to the right of that was dedicated by the members of the Centenary Suburbs RSL sub-branch. As we follow the path around the corner, we come upon this statue of Simpson and his donkey. Obviously this is quite a bit smaller than life-size. 
The lower plaque tells us this statue was made possible by a grant from the Australian Government, Centenary Suburbs RSL subbranch funds, and other donations. The one on the plinth itself is quite brief, and mentions Simpson's self-sacrifice in saving the lives of wounded and helping to forge the spirit of the Anzacs at Gallipoli. There's a lot more to it than that, and if you're Australian you probably already know of Simpson and his donkeys. If you don't know about him it's definitely worth some further reading. But in short, after the landings at Anzac Cove in 1915, Simpson used donkeys to carry the wounded back to the beach to be evacuated, often doing so under fire. He was killed doing this and became something of a legend in Australian history. This statue depicting Simpson, one of his donkeys and a wounded soldier might be small in stature, but I think it's really interesting and very nicely done. I do wish I was able to get better drone footage of it, but as you can probably tell, it was quite a windy day. Still, it's a cool thing to see, and much better to see in person. So if you find yourself in the area, why not check it out? That's about all there is to see at this memorial. This is a pretty nice place, though the road it's on is kind of busy and the traffic is obviously a bit noisy, but it could be worse. It is still a nice place to spend a bit of time sitting and contemplating. I hope you found this interesting. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, why not subscribe, follow, ring the bell, become a patron if you would like to see these videos a bit early, or maybe just come say hi on Discord or Twitch when I'm streaming. Links to all of my things are in the description below, and as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other, and thank you for watching. Farewell.